I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Oops Podcast. Julio Gallarotti, Ryan Lynch, looking jacked. Thank you. Feeling ready to go. I like this hat you got on. Uh, you're doing it. Thank you. You're doing it, Julio. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Um, here we are. We're doing it up. And let's get into it. So, dude, I went to dinner by myself the other day. Okay. And I had a nice time. And I don't know if I only noticed this because I was by myself. But the, the waiter was standing he was like standing at attention. So just in case anybody needed him, he was available. So he was like on the floor available, but he was standing as close as you are to me right now and just standing. And I found that odd. Mm-hmm. Do, what do you do? What do you think? He, uh, he's, he probably was told that he needs to do that. that he needs to do that. When I, the restaurant that I worked at growing up, um, the restaurant that I worked at, we needed to be out on the floor, even if there's only like two tables. And we needed to be standing there, attentive, ready to go. Even if you could assess that everyone's fine. Got you just it. have to be there. Got it. Someone probably told him to be there. Yeah, and he was nice, and it was annoying me. And as he was standing there, I was about to be like, dude, can you not just like stand right there? Mm. But it felt like, I, I don't know. I didn't want to like put that out there. It was, it was Sunday night. I was trying to just like relax. So I was kind of like, all right, somebody probably told him to do this, like you said. So I was like, I'm just going to kind of let him have it. Uh, but... Guys, if you work in a restaurant and you are, people don't like to be stood over while they're eating. He was just standing over me, dude. He wasn't like watching me or anything. He was just standing there being a good waiter, you know, do, do like you said, doing what he's told, but it was a bummer. What, what tone was painted on his face? A helpful one. Eager to help? Yeah, but also like one of a guy who's like not the sharpest guy. Uh-huh. Because <laughs> I think if he were a little, a tad bit more with it, he would have like known to take two or three steps to the left. He was like young seeming. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was also doing stuff where it was like, you could tell he was even maybe new. He was, when he gave me the check, he was like, we hope to see you again. Like he said a thing that like a new guy says. Mm. Like he wasn't, it, this was not this guy's restaurant. He didn't, his parents didn't own it. Like I could tell who's, who owned it. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't him. Some, some, uh, some restaurant managers are very spe- uh, are very strict and he had to stay at his post and it's uncomfortable. You don't want to stand there. I'm sure that he was to some degree aware that he was kind of encroaching on you, but some managers that they're like, you need to be out there. It somehow gives like great service. Mm-hmm. The fact that they're there mm-hmm. planted. Yeah. It was a small restaurant. There's probably only like between 10 and 15 tables and there weren't people at all. Of them. So it was like a slow, quiet night. It was it was nice. There are, it's funny. There are certain restaurants that are like really well suited for the summertime with the way that they're arranged. And then restaurants that are more wintertime restaurants. Maybe that's obvious. And maybe winter restaurants are more malleable for year round because you can adjust the temperature inside. And like outdoor seating requires it kind of to be nice, mm-hmm. especially if you're like on the water or whatever. But it is interesting to sort of see what that is. And the same thing goes with like food and beverages. Obviously there's seasonal stuff, but are there things that are supposed to be seasonal that you just like so much that you like them year round? And if you need a second to think about it, the Negroni is kind of like people consider to be more of a winter beverage, but I like to drink them the entire year. Interesting. I was thinking in the food sense, the first thing that popped into my head was octopus. Mm. I love octopus. Delicious. I, if it's on the menu, I always, I always fight for it. And do you see that as more of like a warm weather option or something? I see it as an all year option for you, for you specifically, for me personally. Got I'm it. always down for some puss. It's always <laughs> delicious. Love the puss, uh, delicious for sure. And everyone, re- every restaurant does it so differently. Mm. It can be citrusy, which makes it summery. It could be a salad, or it could be a little bit of a heartier appetizer uh, mixed with some potatoes, which totally. you I love maybe that. lean towards in the winter. Um, you know, you can garnish it however you want. I love octopus. I think it's delicious. It has a unique consistency and I invite it any season of the year. Mm. It's also interesting because it's hard to do really well. Mm -hmm. Like it's easy to overcook and it's easy to undercook. Uh, and also depending on like how big it is or whatever, like 
sometimes you'll eat octopus and you'll eat it like where you're like, that is the best octopus ever. And it's like for a very satisfying thing. Yeah. I wonder like if there is seasonal meat or not, because with vegetables, it's obvious like tomatoes grow in a specific season, whatever. And I get that maybe some meat dishes a chef would consider to be more of a winter dish. But I wonder if there is like a time of year where the meat is likely to be quote the freshest based on whatever. Mm. Um, so some meats that are in season during the summer include lamb and chicken. Interesting. Um, rabbit and beef as well. So, so like all the meat basically. I'm sure there's some website that'll just say all of them. Right, right, right. But, um, but yeah, that's that's good. I'm trying to think of drinks as well. Uh, a nice organic skin contact wine goes great in the summer. Mm. I opt in for that all year round, but I will fight for it even harder in the spring. Yeah, um, and in the summer, natural wine as well. Wine on ice. Yeah. So mm-hmm. anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. Nice, cold, refreshing wine. Yeah, I mean, everyone's sitting outside right now, drinking their wine, eating their octopus. It, it, it's it's a magical time in the city. Mm-hmm. to be walking around. I know a lot of people uh, live a life where they get to go to the Hamptons or the Jersey Shore every weekend. I am in the city for most weekends unless I'm traveling to visit family, and uh, it's a it still is a, a great place to be. Mm-hmm. I love it. I, I went out on Friday, did a ton of people watching. Um, it's just a, it's a beautiful place. Absolutely love it. Everyone's having fun. Um, dude, it's funny. You mentioned the Hamptons crowd. I find it really obnoxious. I, I, I don't, maybe this is like my thing, but people who are doing Hamptons posts that are in my like age range, I find it to be like obnoxious. It's a little chuggy. What does that mean? Just like corny in like a not nice endearing way. Yeah, it's like very, it feels very like proving that you fit some framework that you'd like to be. It's giving fitting. desperate. Yeah, it, it, you can tell that this your goal was to prove that you are part of a certain group. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm there. I'm there for the weekend, and I'm going to make sure that everybody knows that I was there this weekend, so mm-hmm. they know what type of person I am. And I'm glad that you know, in our line of work, that is just so obviously a bad look that like I'm not interacting with a ton of people who are doing that. It's a bad look if if you're doing it and it's not because you are successful in comedy, that is bad for you because it will show people that you don't need opportunities. Mm. You don't want that. Yeah. Now, the Schultzes of the world, the like that this is a different person than the the prototype I'm dis- describing. This is one of the most successful guys in comedy. That is a completely different thing. Like I want to see Schultz in the Hamptons. Mm-hmm. The random guy I know who's there for one weekend and like making sure to maximize the amount of time he's posting, that is that annoys me. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a way, and I'm just I see these people posting, I'm like, damn, bro, that's fucking whack. Yeah. It's just it's just one of those look at me, pick me, pick me people. And you can tell. Like you can tell it's when you're posting that, it's very fake. And it's very pretentious. At least that's how I see it. It's just look at me, look at me. Mm -hmm. And just because you're there, you think you're above the world. Yeah. You're like, yeah, yeah. It's obnoxious. And you can tell that like that guy was sitting there in February, like daydreaming about what he was going to post when he was in the Hamptons for that one week. And he went, he was going to take his shirt off and put a tennis racket over his shoulder and say some dumb shit being like tennis, anyone and then geotag the, the tennis club, but make sure it's the geotag that says the part of the Hamptons in it. So mm-hmm. we all know, so we don't have to click to actually specifically see that it's there. Much needed rest and play. Yeah, dude. Oh. And then like the next slide is a beachfront that the house that they're staying at is on. And then the next slide is some sort of sunset over a big field. The next slide is whatever, a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. If well, you, hopefully it's orange wine. Hopefully it's orange. Yummy orange wine. If you can't afford a table, then you should be working at a table. Like things like that. Oh, damn. That's there, that's next level. There There is, I think, a level rash. above. What's the, Is it Surf Lodge? Is that a place? Surf Lodge is a place. There's, a, there's the deck at Surf Lodge, which I've heard is even more exclusive. And I think it's you have to do a minimum of $500 to be up there. 
I think it depends on like the weekend. Either the ticket or for a, a table fee. And uh, there is a trend on TikTok. It's like if you're not on the deck at Surf Lodge, you're not in Montauk or something like oh, that. Funny. Like it's even it's a, it's a step above. Just being in Montauk is no longer like the coolest thing you can do. You got to be at Surf Lodge. Interesting. So. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, Surf's dude. Up. Yeah. And maybe it's funny because th- these are two different groups of people that we're discussing, like because of our, you know, age difference. So like that is like the 20, but I think it's still in my age range as well, but like, and they're equally annoying, but it's like the party one. And then the like, more pre kids family or just had kids family where it's like, there's another way to make that same message. Mm -hmm. And that person is the same person 10 years before that person was decades her flage at a minimum person. And now 10 years later, it's the tennis club. Like there's different sort of currencies to prove where you're at. Different settings, same, same tier, same guy, different stage. Yeah. Uh, so I guess all that I take from that is try your best not to just be the exact guy that we expect you to be, mm-hmm. you know, be better, be unique, try to make your own interests, try not to be so impressionable just for the sake of not being as annoying to me at the very least or to Lynch for Julio's sake, for my sake, comment, comment in the YouTube comments, uh, what somebody that goes to surf lodge would caption their Instagram post in hopes to get the most likes possible. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, that that then turns into what my turkey of the week is, is the really basic Montauk Hampton summer post person. Mm. Do better. Mm-hmm. Do better. Uh, so, anyway, yeah. maybe that's sounding cynical, but we all know it's annoying. Not, who said something's wrong with being cynical? Yeah, it, nothing's wrong with being cynical. But it's just exhausting and it doesn't help you. It's not healthy for you to be cynical. Come on. <laughs> I want to pull the devil out Bro, of Julio am, listen, on this podcast. I'm a comedian, so you have to be cyn- a little cynical to mm-hmm. be a good comedian, right? Like you need to be able to make observations and make fun of shit. But it can also wear you down. So do take it with a grain of salt if you're going to shit on stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that is my turkey of the week. Okay. Being a broad poster. Of lame shit. Okay. You want to talk about something positive that could like help us in our lives? Sure. Okay. So I, we talk about this maybe like every other month. I've been having a tough time focusing. I've had like brain rot. I put a limit on my social media so that between the hours of 9 p.m. and 9.30 a.m. I do not have access to any of my socials. Um... And I've noticed in the last three days that I just feel a little better. I'm less anxious. When I go to fill my water bottle up in the refrigerator, those 25 seconds that used to be agonizing, like <laughs> it's not that bad. Like I can just sit and look in the fridge now. And it, it's just, I f- I'm feeling like my mind is being cleansed. It's like I'm doing like a, a cleanse, like a juice cleanse for my brain. I mean, we're three days in. And I just, I wake up feeling a little bit better, just a little bit better. Give myself a fighting chance because if you look at your phone first thing in the morning, it fucks up your dopamine levels for the entire day. Really? And I, I just tend to, to go to my phone and, and scroll for a little bit. Do they say that? Or are you yeah. just, oh, interesting. No. And um, yeah, because I watched a TikTok, some some psychologist is the one that like suggested it if uh, you, you feel like you're experiencing a rut or some form of brain rot. Interesting. So that's been helping me a lot and I've been feeling a lot better lately. Not that I've been crazy in the, in the downs or whatever. Um, but I, I just feel a little bit better. I feel like I can enjoy TV when I'm watching it. Mm-hmm. One thing that, that I've, that I've caught myself doing in the past is I put on a TV show or a movie that I was really excited about. And then before the opening credits are done, I'm like scrolling on TikTok and Twitter telling myself you can do both you can do both that's not fair to the show that's not fair to me i'm not really watching the show right that's like that's some bitch behavior (laughs) so um no i feel you this is very good i like uh i like the idea of trying to figure out ways to sort of fend off brain fog and to come combat it Mm -hmm. um which is funny you mentioned this because i've been reading a book about this also uh 
tennis player Novak Djokovic sort of famously has all these like wacky nutrition uh, techniques and and whatever to to make himself the optimal competitor and make him so his body recover and all that stuff. So it talks a lot about diet, but it talks a lot about like habits uh, separate from that also, as well as like meditating mindfulness, like all that kind of shit, which can sign kind of hoity toity, but it's like interesting to hear it in the context of being an athlete. And he is incredible. Like uh, for anybody who doesn't know about tennis, it was like Federer and Nadal were the two best players. And it was like, they were never going to be, challenged in that category like they were going to have the most everything and Djokovic has sort of slowly taken all of their records and not all of them but is in the process of like basically there pretty much is already no way to argue that he's not the greatest player of all time and the thing that he did differently than those guys was just his approach to all this stuff that I'm talking about so one thing that he talks about is just his gluten which I think is a popular thing with athletes in general as they start to get older, just because it's like inflammation, whatever, but it's supposed to have a thing for your brain. This is not a new concept. In fact, it's such an old concept that people don't even talk about it that much anymore. Mm. But this idea that like you can make dietary changes and if there are things that your body specifically doesn't react well to, that by cutting them out, it will not only help you physically, but it'll also help you mentally. So this idea of sort of figuring out what that is and trying. So I'm playing around with some of this stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, and I don't necessarily feel better, but I've only been doing it for like three or four days. So yeah, any like, if anything can give you a fighting chance to just feel like a little bit better yeah. or a little more focused, it's worth trying at least for a couple of weeks. Right, and you also kind of know what those things are if you really take a step back and pay attention, as opposed to like I'm going to read this book about gluten and suddenly stop eating gluten and think that's going to solve all my problems. When in reality, I'm looking at my phone until the second I fall asleep and looking at it the second I wake up. Like yeah. maybe that will help me more than some sort of dietary thing. So, and that, they also kind of talk about that too. It's like listening to really like paying attention to how you react as opposed to like taking some broad gospel and running with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So anyway, yeah, glad I mean, you're feeling good, Lynch. Thanks. When I mean, like you, you know, you have a problem when you're bringing your phone into the shower with you. Do you do and that? Propping it up on like the caddy. Yeah, and, and then you, whoosh, whoosh. I like, I'm wet. I dry my hands on the towel. Swipe up, swipe up. And you try just, to try to lock onto a video that's like four minutes long. Listen to somebody rant or vent or give advice about X, Y, or Z. Dry my hands. Swipe up. And, really, really bad. So but to what degree is it like you are trying to either get a sense of the landscape for your own benefit so that you can like figure out what to make next or you're just addicted to watching it or you're watching the performance of your shit um, or all of it? I think I open the app to check the performance of my shit or our shit and then I just scroll. It's so easy. It's so easy once you're on. All right. Saw my video. What's on the for you? What, who am I following? What's going on Twitter? What's this video of someone falling off a cliff that I can watch? Like, it's just, mm -hmm. boom, it just happens. Next thing you know, 11 minutes go by. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why you open the app. If you open it, you'll be on it for much longer than y you intended. Yeah. And so I've noticed that by being overexposed to so much stuff that I can't have my own thought. Totally. So now, the last couple of days, I've been laying in bed just thinking, and I've come up with some fun stuff that I'm excited about. Yeah. And I've gotten inspired, and I'm going to run with that. Going to run with that. Even if it's just three days. I'm doing this for two weeks. I think two weeks is a great trial period. I mean, obviously, I should do this for as long as possible. I feel like it's a given that this is healthy to, to not be on social media all day. Um but yeah, see where the, see where this takes me. I, I feel like I, I definitely need to do this. I need to take I need to take action. It's just going to get worse. There's a trend too with this where it's like if you are able to spend the time without the device, like you can get some good thinking going, right? So like I even notice where if I any time I've had an MRI, like I've come up with like really good ideas because it's like one of the only times where I'll be 30 minutes without any devices at all. Yeah. Which is kind of wild. Uh, and even like in the sauna or any time where I can't have my phone with me, it tends to be beneficial. And like you kind of alluded to, you have space in your brain to think of stuff. Mm -hmm. So even like when I'm walking around, I have music on. Like it's rare that I'm just like sitting there with my thoughts. Uh, 
And I would like to be doing that more often too, because while my output is still pretty good, like I do think that I somehow waste a lot of time and I'm like, what did I even do? Like I thought, like I thought I was sitting there working, but like I either did things that, d- that weren't as important. Like I'll, I'll prioritize the wrong stuff or I'll try to avoid certain stuff, even though I need to do it. Um, and how do you, can you get yourself to a place where you're calm and sort of not anxious or stressed? And that, those are the states where when you get to them, you think really nicely and freely. So again, the Djokovic book, I think it's called Serve to Win. And to be honest, the book is sort of like not written that well. Like I'm reading it. Did he I'm, write it? Like, yes, but no, probably. Like somebody uh-huh. else probably, he probably told him a bunch of stuff and the other guy wrote it. But like, there are parts of it that are just like kind of cringe. It's just like written like a like a teenager wrote it. Mm. Um, despite the fact that I suspect he had help. But it doesn't matter. Like, the overall message is still interesting and like kind of inspiring. And the idea of just like all that fucking bullshit, being present, blah, 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 blah. But put into a context that, I find to be a little bit helpful. So anyway, all that is to say, I would like to be uh, maximize my brain output and not waste time because I know what I'm capable of when I have those good stretches. So I just want to make those stretches last longer. Yeah. Lynch, I'm about to be doing some cooking around the house. A little bit of cooking? Yeah, I'm going to be home. I'm going to be trying to limit in walking around as I heal my neck. Uh, but standing is fine. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing better for a person in my current situation, then HelloFresh. Hello. Hello. You don't have to go to the store to get all the ingredients, which to be honest, I would argue is a really difficult, is the difficult part about cooking for a person who isn't experienced cooking. Mm. Like knowing the nuance of how much to get of certain things. Like sure, there's the recipe, but then sometimes it can be hard to get specific produce and have enough and then prepare it. Like HelloFresh takes that entire step out of the equation. Every single thing that you will receive will be the exact amount that you need. And oftentimes it'll be prepared as such. Uh, And if not, it will be in the exact amount that you need, which is an amount that you wouldn't be able to just buy at a grocery store. They wouldn't let you buy less than a certain amount, whether it was like garlic cloves or whatever it might specifically be. And the instructions are so specific and laid out in such a way that you have every single thing you need to execute a very complicated meal. So I'll find myself making some ridiculous stuff that I've never made in any capacity. I'll be cooking rice for the first time. I'll be cooking fried shrimp for the first time. I'll be cooking asparagus in the oven for the first time. And it's all able to be done perfectly with no problems. Uh, saves, Saves time, saves stress, saves the effort of going to the grocery store. It's perfect all around. And they have a wonderful different selection of recipes that change periodically. HelloFresh is where it's at. Go to HelloFresh.com slash oops apps for free appetizers for life. One appetizer item per box while subscription is active. That's a free appetizer for life at HelloFresh.com slash oops apps. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. I have a couple friends who send me so many memes throughout the day, dude, where I'm like, dude, do you do anything? How is it possible that you were sending me this many memes. And this is from a guy who's on his phone a lot. Mm -hmm. So like the idea that he could be using his so often, you can tell this guy's on the for you page on Instagram. Somehow the for you page on Instagram is more boomerish. Would you agree with that or no? Mm -hmm. And like Instagram like does this thing where it'll just like throw you onto the for you page of Instagram without you even knowing. Yeah. It's a half-assed way to try to be more like TikTok and it's kind of ruining Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you'll be looking at photos of friends, which was your intention. And next thing you know, you're watching a video of like a kid doing stack cup mm-hmm. blindfolded without arms. Like you don't know how you got there. Right. Yeah, dude, I want to be, I want to be less available. I think just in a way where I want to get into a cycle where I'm just te- checking my text less, of- less often. So I think what that maybe looks like for me is, I think my watch is going to be in DND most of the time Mm. for the time being. And uh, hopefully I just won't see my texts. I'm not going to purposely not look at them, but I just want it to be, I'm not automatically seeing them like I am now. Like chances are, if you send me a text at this point, I'm seeing it so fast. And I don't, I don't even feel bad saying that out loud because I respond to everybody. So I want to be more like the guy who takes four hours 
I don't want to necessarily be that guy. And I know you're hearing this being like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> you're, this you're might very, be bad. I know. I, I, I'm, I'm realizing now that I've had a really good things maybe coming to an end because you're very quick at responding. Yeah. Which is nice when you're doing pod stuff and going back and forth. Uh, you want a quick response. Um, so I don't know. I think of finding a balance between the two. One of the things that I struggle with is like anytime I implement a new policy where it's like no phone in the bedroom or whatever, right? Once that sort of starts to have its desired effect, I start thinking I don't need to do it anymore. <laughs> and then how, how quickly yeah, I bec- I turn back into the guy I didn't want to be. You become worse. You, you can become worse eventually. One totally. step forward, two steps back. Right. So, <laughs> and it, it re- dude, and it's funny because when I have that conversation, I realize why people who are a little cray cray who take medicine for it, once the medicine makes them feel good, they start to think they don't need the medicine. And that's why a lot of people have these sort of like manic cycles where mm-hmm. they're, they're like, all right, I'm feeling better. Or maybe they don't like the side effects of the meds or whatever. And they're like, I can handle it, but they can't. And I think the phone's the same way. Uh, and they've been saying that they're going to start putting surgeon general warnings on uh, social media apps the way they do on cigarettes. Really? Yeah. Damn, dude, too late. Yeah, because I mean, there are people who are really concerned about the, the mental health aspects, especially for the developing brain. Uh, yeah. Dude, thank God. I know some of the listeners may think that I'm like, I'm like super young and grew up on smartphones. Like I lived 10 years of my life, like proper childhood. No phone. No phone, nothing. No smartphone until I went 11 years before, before the smartphones were invented. I had a proper childhood. I'm so grateful for that. I played with toys. I'm so grateful for that. Um, my screen time last week, um, before I put the filter on, I want to share with you just like, you know, this is like a, a, a cautionary tale. Last Saturday, I spent 10 hours and 19 minutes on social media. Specifically? Yeah. And what about the whole the whole thing? The whole week? Well, well what, like... The whole week I averaged eight and a half hours a day. Um, I wonder how bad that is. Is that really bad? I think it's pretty, it's, it's my worst week in months. Also, Vic was gone. And I was kind of sad, <laughs> but this week I got it down split in half that's so great. far. So down to four, down to four. And that's like a cumulative, like medium, median number. We'll see. We'll I, see. I need to turn mine back on. I've heard of people who have worse, not to make you feel good about yourself. Oh, maybe I can turn off the, uh, maybe the no, downtime. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do uh, that. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Let's rip an email here. Uh, I like this question that we have from Nicole. Is it weird to go to a concert where you don't know a single song? Uh, so it's a good question. There's, so there's a couple important considerations that go into this question. Do you know who the artist is? If you know who the artist is and knows that the, you know, the rep, so first of all, broadly, the answer is no, it is not weird in any scenario, but there are different scenarios. So like I said, if you know the artist and you know that his concert is like legendary, his or her or they or whatever, a concert is legendary, that is like a good call Mm -hmm. objectively. Like, you know that that's going to be a sick experience. You're open-minded. You'll learn about the music and you'll see how lit it is and it'll be fun. If it's just some random ass show that you don't know anything about, it's something to do. Maybe you'll find a new artist. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Do you know the genre of the music going into it? Like, there's some genres I'd be like, fuck this. Immediately. (laughs) Right. Uh, Not even giving you a fighting chance. I wouldn't go to a concert either if I didn't didn't know a single song. I went to the Drake concert, and I knew a handful of his songs. I thought it still sucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, also... Yeah, to the genre point that you make, like there are certain genres where you don't need to know songs, like a like a house show or like that kind of EDM kind of vibe. A lot of it is just like random deep house songs that you don't know. Mm-hmm. And that's fun for anybody if you're into that sort of scenario. If you go to a Taylor Swift show, you don't know any of the words, maybe or any of the songs. Maybe the fact that it's Taylor Swift and you know how great that concert's supposed to be will make it fun. But if it's a random group, I don't know, maybe your friends invited you, said you're going to like it and you go and you like it. Like we've done that. We've invited our friends who didn't know anything about Bad Bunny, had never heard a Bad Bunny song to a Bad Bunny show. They had a great time, Mm -hmm. but they didn't choose to go on their own without us and having us as their shepherds helps. So it's not weird. And actually I, I personally, and I I can't speak for Lynch, but I encourage this behavior 
because I think that it's a fun, cool, potentially horizon broadening experience. You'll learn something about yourself. I'm trying to think of positive things. I mean, it might be fun. You might think it's sick. Mm -hmm. Like that could be positive. If not, you went and saw a new thing, which is can't be anything but positive. Yeah. You know I mean, even if you don't like it, the, the, the way that the email was sent, it kind of sounds like that they've done this and they're like reflecting on whether or not it was weird for them to do it. If mm -hmm. that is the case, what, who did you go see and did you like it or did you not like it? Um, why, who are we to judge you if you had a good time totally. or if you had a bad time, it's just something that you did. I'm curious if you liked it or not. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know the specs there, but definitely go check some shit out that you know nothing about. Why not? Especially yeah. if it's something conventional. You know what I mean? A concert is pretty straightforward. You know what that's going to be like to some degree. It's not like you're going hiking on a mountain alone and know nothing about hiking. I mean, we don't recommend that. But, no. uh, yeah, go to the concert. Have fun. You ever, you ever think about moments when, like, you have the opportunity to, like, save the day? Not, like, in a superhero way. Like, if you're at, like, a, a, a party and, like, you could do something that would enhance everybody's experience and just you'd be a hero. Yeah, I do. But it's it's not always that altruistic. It's more of like a situation where everybody thinks I'm awesome. Exactly. And it might I might not have like brought the keg where we didn't think we would get one. It, may, it might be me like doing something that impressed people and therefore everyone loves me after. Exactly. And it's not even that like you're going into it seeking it out. It's just like you did something sick mm -hmm. and you are you get rewarded with applause and, and just praise and just like way it goes. We were at a... Um, I, I, I ask you that because I presented my brother with that outcome as a possibility. We were at a rooftop party in Brooklyn. He was visiting. All my friends, all Vic's friends, he was visiting. He was a guest, and there was a DJ on the rooftop. After a couple of hours, he wrapped up, and he left. And we were stuck without music. No one was prepared for music. And uh, it was just dead silent and the party was kind of dying a little bit. And so I pull my impressionable younger brother over and I say, Chris, here are my keys. If you run home and grab our big portable speaker, people are going to love you. <laughs> you are going to be the fucking man. It's kind of up to you to save the day. Wow. And I'm pitching him on this idea of, you know, Something that you'd see in a rom-com com compilation scene of just partying and praise. And he looked at me with the glow in his eyes and he was like, all right, fine, I'll go do it. I give him my keys. He runs to our apartment. It's like 10 minutes away. He gets the speaker. He comes back. The party is dead. It's quiet. You can hear everybody talking over each other. He comes up. We pair the Bluetooth speaker. And I look at my brother and I'm just like, I give him like one of those like winks, just like way to go. Enjoy what's about to come as you get to pick the first song. He pressed play on the first song. And the very first thing that was said, is that as loud as that goes? Oh no. No one gave a fuck. Oh God. And I felt really bad for my brother. He didn't get to have that opportunity. What, what, the, so did it, was it, was it the loudest it goes? It was the loudest it could go. What the fuck? That is so, <laughs> I was not expecting that story to go that way. So here's my question. Why did you send him to do it if you knew that there was a possible glorious outcome? It seemed as if, to your point, it was going to be a hit. So it seemed like a lock. Did you just not feel like doing it? It did seem like a lock. Yeah. And I wanted to give him the opportunity to kind of nice not brother. earn his keep, but like be a, be a reason to go chat with. Got it, got it, got it. That's and and I, I sent him off with like, you know, I was like, this is a lock. Yeah, this is like the Yankees are going to beat the Chicago White Sox by at least three runs. You're giving him a layup. And then the White Sox losing by one. Like it just, it just backfired. And he looked at me and he was pissed off. He was pissed at you? Because he was excited about the reward. He was excited about what I, what I sold him on. I sold him he on the idea. trusted you. I sold him on the idea of being like the best guy ever. And I felt really bad about that. He, yeah. Well, did you explain to him that like more often than not, that would have worked out? He must have the sort of sensibility to understand that. He thought it was a lock too. Like okay. if I just asked him to do it and I didn't even try to sell him on it, he probably would have been like, people will appreciate that I did this. Like this is a, this is a, this is a party saving move. Yeah. And the, who I forget who it was, but that was the only, that was the only feedback he got besides my thank you. And mm -hmm. my apology. 
was, I'm sorry that you didn't get what you were, what you deserve to receive. Just someone's, is that as loud as it goes? Yeah, that's real. That's annoying. Hosting, like being able to a save the day when it comes to something like that at whoever's hosting a party's logistical incompetence. If you're able to sort of figure that out for people, you become the man in that situation. Mm -hmm. And you know, that obviously applies in high school or whatever, when there's usually a few people who are able to get the alcohol, those people are like revered and you know, it shouldn't be under underappreciated that being able to host a party well is a currency in and of itself. It makes you into a high standing member in your social group and in general. Like people are gonna wanna go to your thing and it's impressive and it's attractive mm. to be able to organize and execute a party at a high level. And it's unattractive to not be able to. Yeah. Now, if you're not able to for whatever reason, don't try. Don't subject yourself to that. Because don't, don't, don't yeah. Sorry. Don't show your true colors in that situation mm. or improve. Yeah. Don't cram people into an apartment that should not be 30 people deep. Yeah. Let, right. Like have seats for people. Make sure that if you're going to invite people over for dinner, that the food is good enough to fucking eat. <laughs> like what's the point of having this dinner? You want, if this isn't playtime, no, this is real life, dude. You need to make sure that you're able to uh, do it. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I don't know that I naturally have it, but Hill Dog's very good at it. So I've learned a lot from her, and I think I'm improving at least. Yeah, Vic's pretty good at it too. I kind of, I'm just the what do you need guy because I know that she can get us from A to B. And if I can just help her, I know that we both will be like in tip top shape at the end of the night. What makes her so good at it? I know she's clean and she's good at cleaning. She's clean. Like that, I, that, I think that above everything is, is a huge, a huge thing. When people come into your home, the last thing you want is for them to be uncomfortable or a little like turned off by the smell. Just make them feel comfortable. And, and I feel like having a clean home is, is the first thing you can do for that. Be prepared. Have alternative beverages for people that don't drink. Offering somebody a soda. Mm. I've, I've, seen, I've seen some people that have come to my apartment and I'm like, do you want a high noon? Do you want a beer? Do you want a Sprite? The glow in their eyes when they're not, when no one feels pressure to drink, drink. Um, that makes for a, a great hosting environment. And Victoria's got tabs on all of that. So she's yeah, really dude, good at it. Yeah, it's a good it. point. We had a party and Hillary was like, we should have non-alcoholic beer for the people who don't drink. And I was like, oh, whoa. Like, never would have thought of that. But good call. Yeah, and that kind of goes into what you're saying a bit. Uh, but the Sprite, too, is an interesting one. Like, it's yeah, it's it's approachable in a different way than mm -hmm. a non-alcoholic beer. Uh, and it's a very good point. Yeah. Does she cook well? I know she bakes well. Yeah, she's a good cook. She's got a couple things in the rotation that I get excited about. <laughs> Risotto's pretty solid. Nice. Dude. Yeah, she brought home lobsters uh, yesterday. Jeez, from Massachusetts. Alive, alive lobsters. I was. I'll be honest. I, I, it was. We, we had. It was the first time that we we had to uh, kill them before eating them, and it was. It was kind of. It was kind of tough. It's a little gruesome. Didn't like it. It was inhumane. Um, but I mean, no, no, we did it. We did it. Sorry. We did it in the most humane possible. We looked it up the way you like Gordon Ramsay showed us it, how way. you go. It's with the head. That's all I'll say. Um, it's quick. It is quick, but it was, it was, it was just kind of tough to do. I asked Victoria, I said, do you want me to kill them all? I'll just do it. And she said, I owe it to them to kill at least one of them because that's, that's, it's cowardly for me to eat the lobster and not be one to take its oh, life. Wow. That's very Game of thrones -y. She honorably stepped onto the little step stool because she's too short to like be on top of the lobster from the countertop, and she did what she needed to do. <laughs> and we, we felt a, like it was delicious lobster. And like I kept saying thank you like to, to the meat as a, before I was taking a bite. It was really, really good. What is with this sort of ritual? Do you guys always do this? What? Do you sort of like tell your food you appreciate it and acknowledge that is this like a thing or was it specific to the fact that you killed all the lobsters? It was specific them? that, that we, that we kill, that we killed the lobster. <laughs> but killed. like I, I talk and say thank you to like inanimate objects. Um, nice. like when I'm, when we were changing out our closet between the seasons, I was storing all of my winter clothes and I was giving them progress reports about like what I liked about 
what they did for me this season, what I didn't like for what they did for me this season. I apologize to some clothes because I was like, it's not you. It was me. I didn't wear you a lot this season because I didn't like the way my body was uh, with the way that your shoulders, uh, with the way that your um, sleeves fit on my shoulders. That's on me. I promise that I'm going to be wearing you more next season. Do you do this when Victoria is there? I did it while Victoria was there because she was like, Ryan, I need you to help me with the closet tonight. And then I was like, all right, well, then I'm going to have fun with it. And I just kind of tuned her out. And she, it, she ended up wishing that I didn't help out because I was talking to all my clothes. And I was giving high fives to some of my button downs. I was like, you were fantastic. And I wasn't wearing you last season. I'm so surprised that you came into the rotation. I'm so glad to have you. I cannot wait to see you in the fall. Okay, have a nice dormancy. And then I put him in there. I would scold some clothes and be like, your button fell off this year. And I spent a lot of money on you. I was not expecting that. Piss poor performance. I'm going to get a new button on you next year. And it better not fall off because I'm very disappointed in your performance this year. Um, and it, it's kind of just like a fun way to show appreciation to the <laughs> things that you have. Um, I've had to say goodbye to some clothes. I would throw them out and I would, you know, those were tough. Those were you know, tough. You just didn't quite grow into the current landscape unfortunately it's yeah. time i'm like i don't know why i bought a tan colored t-shirt that's on me that's on me goodbye hate to see it yeah well dude they do say that talking to stuff in general is supposed to have some sort of holistic value which there's this there's this sort of eastern tale that and it's supposed to be a thing and you guys can try it if you put two glasses of water on the table and you like are positive to one and negative to the other, like within a few days, the one that you were negative to will start to have like a green hue to it, but the other one will stay crystal clear. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. Should we try it? We should do that. I'm about to go away after we record this episode for a few days. I'm going to do it. I'm going to leave the glasses on the counter and we'll let you guys know what ended up happening with it. Okay. Yeah. So wait a minute. Can you be nice to it for a couple of days and then leave it? You know, I think you're just like instantly nice to it and leave it. And then you're instantly kind of rude <laughs> to the other one. <laughs> you're negative and rude and you kind of yell at it. And supposedly the, uh, the one you yelled at is going to start growing things subtly resent, but there'll be a tent, a tint resent residue, resent residue, Res residual resentment. Yeah. Not great. Uh, I love that. I like that. And too. then the, the one that you're nice to just stays pure. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So they say, we're going to give it a shot and see if it works. That's a fun exercise. Yeah. We'll do it after we're done recording and we'll put them out on my counter. Cool. Yeah. Have you talked to your plants lately? What's going on with the plant boy? I've been talking to them. The plant boy, we had like, for whatever reason, he was not absorbing his nutrients. So mm -hmm. like he got really damp. And at one point he was like on life support. Like he, the water was starting to smell bad. It was like smelling like, um, what's the word? What's the smelly gas? Not methane. It's, it's, uh, sort of smelling like sulfur, which is like eggy and sort of smells like gross. Like vinegar? No, more like ass. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the plant started smelling like shit. I hit up our girl, Jackie, who's the plant whisperer. And she basically said, she's like, you need to drain him and then let him dry out and then sort of get used to his weight. So when he feels light again, that's when you can start feeding him again. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. So anyway, I dumped him out in the sink, which was hard because he was like overflowing. I kind of kept watering him and the water wasn't absorbing. I didn't realize it because it's in this big pot. So once I started smelling it, I was whatever. So I kind of brought him over to the sink poured him out. I was getting some of that gross water on the floor. So I had to like clean up a bunch after this is all while Hill, Hill was out of town, but I like, and the house smelled like shit too for like three or four hours. I opened up all the windows and I was like, I was, it was unclear if that would go away. It did thankfully. Uh, and I put him back in there and I kind of just let him dry out for a while for like weeks. And now he's finally at the point where he can take on a little bit of water. He started to like wilt gently filled him back up just with a little bit for now. And they say that, like, changing a plant's environment can really change its behavior. So, like, I think this is part of it. I think moving to the new apartment, the plant was freaked out. It's been tough. Uh, which is crazy to say all this shit, but it's just, like, true. Like, plants are alive. Uh, and you need to, like, treat them good. I just picture you, like, running down your block with your plant boy being like, Someone call an ambulance! <laughs> Someone call an ambulance! <laughs> He's on life support. Damn. But, dude, yeah, the... 
Uh, maybe the plant too is like, he's a little out of the limelight now. Maybe he feels sad. So I got to remember that and keep, keep giving him attention. Yeah. You know, you need your plants healthy out here. Yeah. Leave a thoughts and prayers in the comments. Thoughts and prayers for the plant boy. For the plant boy. Uh, he's doing all right for now, but. All right. So I don't know how to mind my own business. I'm not, I'm not going to mind my own business and that'll be the end of me. But one thing I love to do is when I'm walking down the street, sometimes I'll pause my AirPods, pop them into transparency mode, and I'll spy on strangers as they walk by because I just want to know what they have to say. And sometimes they say these crazy things that you, you catch in the middle of a conversation, and out of context, they sound insane. Yesterday, I was walking by this woman. I want to share with you what I overheard her say. I caught her in the middle of saying, that's how the police will come and arrest you. <laughs> and I was I was so excited to hear that because I I... I I have no idea the circumstances in which the person she's speaking with is in, but she sounded very serious. Yeah. And you have to wonder, is she talking about broadly, is she kind of advising the person to not take it to the next level because he will get caught or is she talking conceptually about a specific crime? Yeah. And, and when she was saying that's how the police will come and arrest you, it seems like she's been trying to convey to him that whatever or her, whatever they are doing is bad. And she needs to keep reminding this person that what you're doing is so bad that the police will come. I need to say it three times because it's not getting to you. Mm -hmm. She's very stern. That's all I could gather from the walk by. And that's part of the rules of this game. You have you can't go back and follow them. That's fucked up. You have to just catch it. You have to catch okay. what you like get that. and work with what you got. And you can work backwards or forward with that. So I feel like she she is borderline an accomplice with the type of advice it's possible. Uh, that she's giving. Now, you could argue that she's like speaking in the hypothetical sense, but the tone, the tone was way too real. And I don't think that you would you would you would be strict if you were playing out the options of a hypothetical situation. So um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say. I got one of these too. I I've, I forget if I brought that. I probably brought this up at some point, but I want to bring it back up because I may not have. So anyway, I heard a guy telling somebody his Instagram handle. Did I say? Did I tell this? Oh. He, go, like he goes. He goes. <laughs> he goes. Yeah, follow me. He goes. It's Jonathan. He goes. It's Jonathan G. But Jonathan. It's good, right? That is pretty good. No, that he said that. Oh, he said it's good, yeah, right? That's good. You get it? He's like, it's good, right? Jonathan, did you find him? Did he change it? Was this the guy? I have no idea. But is that his thing? Uh, one more. So it's Jonathan. Jonathan G, which is Jonathan. Yeah, it is Jonathan. Jonathan. Um, give Jonathan a follow, dude. He has no idea. I can't tell. Oh my god, yes. Give Jonathan a follow. <laughs> it's kind of hard to find. Jonathan. Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan is fucking spicy, dude. I love that. You, it's so inch. I think, I think this is Jonathan. Does he look like the guy that could have been I, in? I don't remember. Yeah. Hey, sure. Like, like, yes. Potentially. Yeah. Like more so yes than no. For sure. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Some, there's something fun. Like, like, oh my God. Like you'll hear someone be just, I don't even want to make anything up. I'm just keep, I'll just keep coming with things that I hear because you like, they all sound so made up. I, yeah. I can't even think of it. You know what? You can't even make it up. That's what I'm trying to say. You can't even make up what the people say on the streets. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoy listening. Uh, it's one of my favorite things since moving here. This is great. Love it. Yeah. Uh, love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. If you guys hear any good ones, let us know too, because I am constantly hearing people say absurd shit and uh, it's always, it always tickles me. Yeah. So we love, we love that. Dude, it reminds me, uh, have you seen, so there's people like, robbing people a lot these days <laughs> uh specifically uh there's this one group of guys who ride up on mopeds jump off they put a gun in your face and they, you give them your shit which is that's like a pretty standard robbery technique these guys have taken it to the next level though they are actually robbing people inside of restaurants they're going in you're at a restaurant sitting down this happened in williamsburg into the restaurant where people are sitting they go up to one of the first tables quickly put a gun in their face and you give your shit, and then they run off. Mm -hmm. That is wild, bro. The in the restaurant crime, I don't know that I've ever heard of that happening here before. Yeah, I've read that. I've read that people didn't even notice it happened until after the fact. Wow. 
Yeah. It also happened at a different restaurant in Williamsburg a week before that one. Which which place do you know? Marlowe and Sons. Yeah, right by Diner. Yeah, on Boulevard, I think. You know the restaurant Diner? On Boulevard? I think it's called Boulevard. Boulevard is the street? Broadway. Broadway, yes. Broadway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's on it's on street. Yeah, it's on street. It's on Ave. It's on Avenue. Um, um interesting, dude. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Dude, well, Vic and that I saw that on Reddit uh the morning after it happened, Victoria and I went to the movies to see Bad Boys, and it is right by that restaurant. Oh, uh, interesting. And we were walking home around 9.30 p.m. I don't know exactly when the crime happened, but I think we missed it by a half hour before or a half hour after. And if it if we did get there after it happened, the restaurant looked normal, uh, like it looked as if nothing happened. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's funny. I, w- I was at the cellar when that the comedy seller when that happened but it, it was the outside version but i saw the police taking the police report from the people who it happened to yeah i just missed it by a couple of minutes so these guys are out there uh not trying to make you scared i mean you know it's a big city you're probably going to be fine obviously but take your normal precautions mm. and i guess if you're out going out to eat sit in the back of the restaurant is the moral of the story i guess so yeah i don't know that that kind of scares me yeah both of those freaking. places are pretty Safe vibes. Yeah, the city, New York City, safe is a safe place, relatively speaking. Uh, you know, it's not a place where you are sort of afraid walking around. Typically, in any neighborhood, I still am not. Yeah, uh, this isn't going to affect my behavior at all. But you know, stop giving our families reason to worry. Please <laughs> stop giving my grandma one other reason to be nervous about me living in the city. Please cut it out. They'll catch these guys. I mean. It's the city is so surveilled. Like there's no way to get away with things anymore. That's it. Uh, good luck out there, everybody. And be safe. Enjoy yourself. Go see a concert from an artist that you've never heard of. Listen to people as they walk by. Try to keep some more open space in your brain and all that shit. Yeah. Thoughts and prayers to the plant boy in the comments. Uh, you know, 30 comments is going to give him a fighting chance. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. Take care of the plant boy and uh, go into my bio and click the link if you want to write your city down, if you want me to come perform. I'm trying to figure out the next spots on my touring schedule. So uh, go in, go on there. It's It should be linked to all my socials. So Instagram, TikTok, whatever your sort of preferred method is, go in there, give it a click and fill that out. Ice House in Pasadena in California uh, in August and then St. Pete Coastal Creative in September. Come see a show. I'm also gigging around New York City. Lynch, you have this comedy competition coming up, right? August 1st uh, in the Upper East Side. I'll post information about that uh, on my socials at Ryan is really polite. Um, yeah, we'll Oops, see. Yep, oopspodcast.com for merch. Oopspodcast at gmail.com for emails. Uh, shoot us messages. Let us know what's going on. Hit us with some comments. Subscribe. All that shit. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>